Hi guys, this is Kwame bringing you more data set insights. In this video, I will discuss and demonstrate how to join tables in SQL. Joining tables is necessary whenever the data you want to access to say, create a report is stored in more than one table. In such a case, you need to form a connection between the relevant tables in order to pull and use their data for the report. Tables can be joined directly or indirectly. But to keep things simple, I will demonstrate how to join them directly. Regardless of whether you're performing a direct or indirect join, it is essential that the tables are designed, structured, and related to each other in a way that makes joining them possible. That out of the way, let's join some tables. Let's say that we work for a bicycle retailer with three separate locations. And then one day our manager comes to us and requests a report showing all the employees at the company and the store location at which they work at. So in other words, our manager wants a report like what you see here on the screen. One with the first field showing the first name of each employee, a second field showing the last name of each employee, and a third field showing the store or the location at which each employee works at. Now, if all of this data was contained in one single table in our database, then writing the query to generate the report will be easy and straightforward. Unfortunately, the data is scattered or divided between two separate tables in our database. That means in order to generate the report, we have to join those two tables in our query. The two tables in question are the sales staffs table and the sales stores table. The sales staffs table contains the first name field and the last name field, or in other words, the first names of each employee and the last names of each employee that we need to generate for our report. While the sales stores table contains the store name or the store at which each employee works at that we need to generate for our report. Now, as I noted earlier, tables are joined on a common field. So looking at the sales staffs table, I see several other fields in addition to the first name and last name fields. I see a staff ID field. I see an email field showing the emails for each employee. I see a phone field showing the phone number for each employee. I see an active field likely indicating if the employee if the employee is still employed at the bike store. I see a store ID field corresponding to the store location at which each employee works at. And I see a manager ID field. Now, the easiest way to join this table with the sales stores table is for the sales stores table to have at least one of these fields in common and for that field to have the exact same spelling, the exact same data type, and the exact same purpose. So if I open the sales stores table, I see a store ID field, I see a store name field, a phone field, an email field showing the email for each store, a street field showing the address for each for each store, a city field, a state field, and a zip code field. From what I see, it has a store ID field and an email field, just like the sales staff table. However, in this case, the email field corresponds to the store instead of to each employee. So we can rule this, this field out. That leaves a store ID field which is exactly the same as the store ID field in the sales staffs table. So the store ID field is spelled exactly the same way, has the exact same data type, and serves the exact same purpose. What this means is that we can join both tables directly in our query. Now that we have determined the tables that are required for creating our report and the field that they need to be joined on, we can proceed to write our query. Now, 
Whenever writing a query, I normally start by selecting the fields that I want to include in the report. So in this case, I want a first name field, I want a last name field, and I want a store name field. So I want to select first name, last name, and store name. The next step is to introduce into our query the table, the first table that, inclu that includes all or some of these fields. Now we have two tables that we need to include in the query and it doesn't matter which one you include first as long as you end up including both of them in the query. In this case, I am going to start off by including the table that contains the first name and last names of each employee. So I want to pull the first name and last names of each employee from, from the sales staff table. And I am going to abbreviate this table SDA. The next step is to introduce the second table, or in other words, or more precisely, to join the second table to the sales staff table. So I am going to join to the sales staff table the sales store table, which contains the store name field. So I am going to join sales stores. And I am I am going to abbreviate this table STO. The final step is to let the SQL engine know on which common field these two tables should be joined on. And as we established earlier, the field that these two tables have in common is the store ID field. So I am going to tell the SQL engine to join these two tables on their store ID field. So join them on, on the store ID field. So SDA dot store ID equal STO dot store ID. So I just told the SQL engine to join the store ID field in the sales staff table to the store ID field in the sales stores table. And that's it guys. That's our query. So if I hit execute, voila. This is the report that our manager wanted. One showing the first name of each employee, the last name of each employee, and the location, the store location at which each employee works at. In this exercise, we were able to join the tables directly because they had a field in common. When the tables you want to use for a report don't have a common field, you will often have to do what is called an indirect join. You can learn how to do an indirect join in this other exercise. If you have questions regarding anything I discussed in this video, just let me know in the comments below.